if you had to start over right now from zero, no money, no established company, what would you do to rebuild? Or what would you even build? Yeah, it's a, uh, it's a great question. Um, assuming I'm starting over with all the skills and experience that I have. And you have to um, start right now, 2023. 2023. Except October. I don't know. Yeah. This, this day yeah. of October. The way I think about this is, so success is based on the skills that we have, the character traits that we possess, and the beliefs that we carry about ourselves, those skills, and those character traits. And so I think for anybody out there who's like in a position of starting from today, the first question that I would ask myself is what skills do I have? And then what can I do with those skills? Or what skills do I need to create the results that I want? Um, so for me, I'm actually kind of going through this right now because I'm starting something from scratch, which is uh, my own content series based on being everything here with Live Bearded and what I've learned. I've really fallen in love with the process of creating content. So I'm in the process of building a YouTube series. And so I would go all in on that. And it would be um, creating content that shares my experiences, um, my thoughts, and basically educating and inspiring people through the different failures and lessons and pain points that I've had in my life. I think that would be probably the first thing that I would do. And then I would pair that with some type of product or service that could go along with it. Well, yeah, you, Spence. It. yeah, it's a great question. To be honest, I've never really thought about it. Um, but I think to kind of piggyback on what Mink said and what we were talking about better every day and just ordinary things practice consistently, I think with the belief and the skill set, making the assumption that I have this skill set, um, I would get right back into the game of e-commerce, but be able to apply everything that we've learned through Live Bearded to condense time, right? When we started Live Bearded, we had Mink had some experience with Facebook ads. I was completely green in e-com, digital, anything. And so the journey over the last seven, eight years to learn the skills and, and kind of seeing what Live Bearded is today, to take those skills and, and duplicate it into another e-commerce brand, my assumption is that based on the knowledge and skill set that I have today would be able to condense that time frame and that growth. So I would, uh, I mean, we have a little, a little something I've been working on the side in the, in the outdoor space. I'm super passionate about the outdoors. So if I were to go into a niche, it'd probably be into uh, some men's related products tied to the outdoors. Yeah. So. And, and I think too, like relating it back to someone who doesn't have our experience, cause mm -hmm. we've been, you know, relatively successful in our yeah. business less garage than, to 3000 square le, foot le, yeah, less seven. than one half of one percent of all businesses ever do the revenue that we do to give you some perspective um and that number is backed up by like small business administration and certain things like that so uh from a standpoint of live bearded success and growth we're in the one half of one percent of all businesses in america which is pretty exciting and that's come from you and i working our ass off and building an amazing team and developing an amazing team and empowering them and, and doing all those things. But if you're starting from scratch, I would go back to what I said in the very beginning. Of what skills do you have? What character traits do you have? And what are your beliefs? And then I think of it in terms of we can develop cash producing skills. And those cash producing skills will help us generate revenue as we're figuring things out. So you, JR, you're a comedian on the side. Stop and it. if you wanted to use that as a career path, you could develop that into a cash producing skill that could potentially sustain you long term. And obviously, mm -hmm. that was a direction you wanted to go. Spence, you love fitness. You've always mm -hmm. been one of the best shaped dudes I've ever seen. Right. You could use your love for fitness and being in good shape yep. as an entryway to develop the cash producing skill of being a personal trainer or an online fitness coach or taking that foundation and going there. And when I got started with, with my online journey or my entrepreneurial journey, it was in 2009 and I had no fucking skills. And I knew I wanted to do online marketing. And I knew that if I was going to sell something online, I needed someone to see something. I needed traffic. I needed eyeballs. And I didn't know how to do that. So I said, well, I either need to do SEO or I need to do paid media. And SEO seemed complicated to me and paid media. I could pay Facebook and get someone to view my stuff immediately. I was like, I need to learn paid media because if I can generate traffic and then I can figure out how to convert that traffic, then I can have a cash producing mm -hmm. skill. If you're an investor or a stock trader or you're a writer, or we all have the ability to generate a cash producing skill. So if you want to, if you're starting from scratch and you want to create something, I would ask yourself, what cash producing skill do you have the potential to create or would you want to create and then reverse engineer that backwards yep. and go out and learn how to do it? Because you can learn anything on YouTube today. Yeah, 100%. But I yep. 
And I think it'd be, it'd be helpful to find something that you are passionate about or could see yourself doing at insane volume, right? The fact that your hobbies are creating content and comedy, you could do that 80 hours a week, 100 hours a week and not get burnt out because you're so passionate about it and it would drive you, yeah. right? But trying to force something that you're not actually genuinely passionate or see yourself doing time and time again because yeah. the amount of volume input needed to be yeah. successful is way the fuck bigger than most people think. Yeah. And you hit that burnout mode pretty quickly if you're doing it for a paycheck or for eyeballs and you, you know what I mean? Like finding that alignment where that will pull you forward is, is super critical. Yeah. I don't think of it in terms of passion. You can think of it in terms of passion and a lot of people do. I think of it in terms of personality. Like what does my personality lend itself to? Yeah. Do I like connecting with people? You've always been super gregarious and outgoing. That's why you went into real estate for a while in yep. sales, right? Same, I'm guessing with you, outgoing, gregarious, like you like to make people laugh and yeah. you go out there, you find so maybe not right. passion, yeah. but the right seat to 100%. compliment your natural abilities. Yeah. 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 Well, there's yeah. also something to be said, like even, so I am passionate about comedy. I have learned there's some God given ability with me in my comedy that like the more I practice it, like, you know, it's just like a different level, but in order to make money at comedy, you have to be able to understand all the other things. So yeah. whatever you're passionate about, you do have to branch out from there yeah. to make opportunities for yourself. Like, like just speaking to the comedy sense, like, you know, find like, I like making movies. My goal is to like make movies with my friends, do like happy Madison production, like Adam Sandler. Yeah, love it. It's like ultimate goal. But in order to do that, you got to find the distributor for the movie. So you start working backwards, like who will buy this product and everything. So even as a comedian, like I like to make people laugh. That's the thing I always want to do. But I learned that in order to have that opportunity, I had to learn how to video edit. I had to learn mm -hmm. camera angles. I had to learn how to record audio. <laughs> yeah. You know, you have to learn so many different things in order to support that passion to make it a profitable product yeah. that people would want to buy. Yeah. I think it's so important to say this. Like Spence and I were the co-founders, were the owners. And a lot of people think like, oh, when you're the quote boss or when you're the owner, right, you don't have to do anything that you don't want to do. Hmm. And it's the exact opposite. Like we have to do so much bullshit that we don't want to deal with. And I yeah. think there's this idea of like, well, I only like to do this or I only want to do that. And it's like, no, you're always going to have shit that you have to do. And the job of being successful at something is marginalizing the amount of shit that you have to do to the smallest amount. But there's always going to be shit you have mm -hmm. to do. And so just understanding that, like you were saying, I just want to do comedy, but I had to learn how to do this and I had to learn how to do this. And, and so many people are like, well, I don't like that or I don't want to do that. So I'm not going to do it. So they let their dream die on the vine because they're not willing it. to work through some of the shit to get to the fun parts and just setting all my brothers up there, uh, all my brothers out there up for success. There will always be fucking shit you have to wade through. And part of, I think being a man is it's your duty to wade through that, to get to the other side of, of the, the vine, so to speak, so that you can start to do the things that you really enjoy doing.